Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, last week I was having a discussion with one of my colleagues and he has just landed a job as a SOC analyst in a very like uh, good fintech firm within the UK. And the question he kept asking me that, is cybersecurity even a good career choice now with all this AI stuff coming along? He was very worried about AI taking away his job and he saw some of my videos talking about agentic AI and you know how it can impact and generative AI, how it's taking away a lot of things that we used to take for granted. And the question kept coming back to the same thing that how viable is cybersecurity for entry level as an entry level position or as a long term position, given the pace at which AI is evolving. So that's the question I wanted to talk to you about today, like how to succeed in cybersecurity in this new age of AI, because things are changing. If you are not aware of this, things are changing at a very rapid pace and you need to future proof yourself. So that's why it is so important to watch this video and take away the lessons which I'm going to uh, tell you about. If you're new to this channel, my name is Taimurish Lal. I'm a senior security consultant with AWS. And on this channel, I talk about things like cloud security, AI and cybersecurity career advice. So do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video if you found it useful. So what am I talking about here? Yeah, I'm talking about basically succeeding in cybersecurity in the AI age as like like I said, AI is changing very, very rapidly. It's changing a lot of industries very, very rapidly. And remember that this is the least advanced that AI is right now. It is only going to get better with time. That's why it is so important to future proof yourself in the age of AI. And a lot of people, they get confused. They don't know where to start, right? And like this is, you can think of this is the roadmap, which I see people that like they're confused. Then the solution to this is to research, to understand the impact that AI is having and then partner with it to really leverage its power for your own gain. And that will lead to long term success that will lead to you future proofing yourself in this age of AI. So the first thing you should do, and I really want to stress this, is to partner with AI. A lot of times cybersecurity professionals, when they hear AI, they think about AI security only, right? They know oh, I have to secure AI. They don't think about how I should be using AI within my own job, right? A simple action step I want you to do for this month or this week, wherever you have time, choose one Gen AI tool, right? And use that to automate one repetitive task, like something you're doing. Try to automate it. It doesn't have to be within your job. It, it can be within your own personal life. And explore like a low risk agentic AI use case. You know, maybe you're in the SOC. How can I automate? one of my SOC activities which is Jindic AI. How can I automate a script? How can I automate something like within cloud security and see the impact that it have and that is your return of investment on AI that present that to your team and manager that will show you as a forward thinking person. It will show you that you are understanding the impact that AI is having within your own job and to management will show that you are embracing AI. Please do not be one of those people who are only thinking about AI security and AI risks. You need to understand the positive aspects of AI. If you're that guy who is only going to be shouting about how bad AI is all the time, people are just going to start ignoring you. So that's the first thing. Choose an AI tool, use it to automate, use it to like, you know, uh, uh, get a benefit of this within your normal regular cybersecurity and present it to management and see the impact that it's going to have. The second one, I want you to understand really, if you're in cybersecurity, you should focus long term on roles that need human judgment. And this is something I've said many, many times. AI is going to take away a lot of jobs, but it is going to introduce a lot of jobs also. Like say Gen AI, right? If you have Copilot or Amazon Q, it can write policy drafts, summarize alerts, and agentic AI can automate so many things like SOC, cloud security, but it cannot understand context. It cannot understand the person I'm talking to, what kind of a person that is, the personality type, how to make him understand, like build trust with that, right? If you have a security incident, Management is not going to go to Gen AI or Agentic AI. It is going to the cybersecurity team and nobody can like calm a tomb. Nobody can like, you know, read between the lines. No AI can do that. Only a human being can do that. So that is your edge. And how do you use that edge? So I hope you understand now, like th this is the thing which is going to differentiate you from an AI and this will be your killer edge long term within cybersecurity. But how do you take advantage of that? Well, the first thing you should do is speak the language of business risk. So many cybersecurity professionals I've seen make this mistake. I, I made this mistake for the longest time in my career. I used to speak too much in overly technical lingo, 
when when I was explaining stuff, right? I, I would be standing in front of the CEO or the CRO talking about SQL injections and uh, firewall packets and you know the firewall signatures. Nobody cares about that. They don't care about that, right? If you speak in terms like CVEs and exploits, you will be ignored at the decision making table. They won't understand you. You could be talking about the highest risk that is there, but then if they're not understanding what you're saying, nobody's going to take action. So you need to connect your cyber security risk to the business driver, right? From the SOC dashboard, from the SOC dashboard to the boardroom. Like, for example, I'll say that if exploited, this issue can delay our product launch. We'll, we will get subjected to regulatory fines and that can be up to like 300 pounds in fines, you know, 300k euros. That is something the CEO and the COO will, will set up and take notice of this. So that's why you need to be able to uh, speak the language of the business. Now, how do you do that? A lot of people say that you need to speak in business terms. Okay, okay. S simple action point. If you want to develop this tool and do this regularly and you will see yourself improving. Take an incident. It doesn't have to be like from your own company. Maybe it's a market incident. Rewrite it for a completely non-technical audience, right? Completely remove all the technical stuff that is there. Just highlight what happened, what is the business impact, and so what? That's the question you should ask yourself. The CEO will be asking, so what? Okay, this happened, so what? Remember the CEO and the senior management, they, they are very pressed for time, right? They want to get right to the heart of the matter quickly. So just after every paragraph, ask so what, so what, so what? That will help you to summarize it. One pager and practice delivering that summary in within 60 seconds. Get one of your friends who is maybe in the non-technical department, like finance and accounting, marketing, and present it to them and then ask them did you understand what I'm trying to say if the more you practice this believe me your skills will improve it is like working out right the more you do it the more you see you'll see yourself improving number four what you should be doing is building a second specialization in the age of AI single skill careers alone will not be enough because AI is going to be taking over so many things Whatever you're doing, learn a second domain like AI, cloud privacy, DevOps, product strategy. Please do not be just one guy who knows only one thing. You need a second specialization that complements what your core is. If you're in cloud security, look at governance. If you're in governance, look at AI security, that sort of thing, right? And look for projects, intersection projects, where the two skill sets in overlap, right? Even like uh, anything that can, you can do as a project, take it up within your company. And that can become a very powerful tool of your future readiness because that way the manager will see that you're expanding your skill set and you do not have just this one skill set that can potentially go obsolete when AI become like AI becomes more and more self-aware. So please keep this in mind. Do not just like, uh, like I said, build a second specialization. Do not be just like a guy who knows only one a generalist. Try to have multiple skill sets where you are good at. And lastly, I want to tell you that please make your skills publicly visible. That is so important nowadays. Uh, your personal brand, it is one of your biggest assets, especially if you lose your job and something happens or if you're looking for a job. You cannot be like invisible anymore, right? There are so many opportunities. Hiring managers, if they're looking at your LinkedIn profile, they, they don't just look at your LinkedIn profile. They will also see what you're doing on a regular basis. That will show that the sort of thinking that you have. So sharing your insights alone, it will give you a lot of leverage and opportunities. You will actually see people reaching out to you, right? So what can you do? Post once a week on LinkedIn or a blog, you know, anything that you've learned, breakdowns of incidents, not your company incidents, please don't, don't share that publicly. But, you know, market incidents, any lessons that you've learned, any tools that you've tested, do it on LinkedIn. If you're not familiar with LinkedIn, maybe a, a GitHub, a Notion page, but regularly share those insights where you are, like people gather and that you will see that no AI can take over your brand. I hate to tell you this because AI is a very robotic way of thinking and a robotic way of speaking. People can immediately see that this is not a human being. This is an AI, which is somebody is copy pasting those posts from chat GPT. So be honest and be like, you know, like natural about this. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to know 5% more than the person you're talking to. And like I said, if you're learning something, share that learning. You don't have to, you can be completely transparent that I'm new to this subject and I'm learning about this. And that will uh, give a lot of people a lot of trust about what you are doing. So I hope you've understood. This is just like a short video to show how you should be thinking for the next five years. What are the things you should be looking at? What are the things you should be adopting? Like I said, it's a simple step process. First, you're confused, you're scared, you don't understand what is happening. Then you research it and you see the potential of AI. And then once you incorporate these things, that will set you up for long-term success. So I hope this video was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.